Hey guys, it's Brian. I am back in the garage today with a super controversial topic, the Honda RC valve. Today, I'm gonna to cut through all the noise, all the BS, show you exactly how to set it up the right way. You'll never have to watch another video on this topic ever again. So I'm gonna show you everything you need to know right now. RC valve take number 23. Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm in the garage today. Today I'm going to teach you how to adjust your Ricky Carmichael valve. Wait, Ricky Carmichael? Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to adjust your revolutionary control valve. No. Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm going to show you how to adjust your remote control valve to remote control. Hey guys, today I've got a great topic for you. I'm gonna show you how to adjust your radio control valve. Wait, radio? Wait, radio control? All right, having some fun. Hey, today I'm gonna to show you how to adjust your revolution control valve. That's what it's called, revolution control. Not Ricky Carmichael, not remote control, not revolutionary control, not radio control, revolution control valve. That's what we're gonna go over today. This is gonna be a fun one. This topic is highly controversial and uh, certainly there's more BS about this particular adjustment, I think, than any other one that I've ever seen on the internet. The amount of disinformation is so epic, it's unbelievable. It reminds me of like watching the news or something, you know, you just never know it's true anymore. It's everybody's got an agenda or they're just stupid and they don't know what they're talking about or people are asserting things they have no clue about. But I can tell you this, that there is a correct way to adjust this RC valve. The service manual doesn't really cover it that well. The internet does not cover it very well. Unfortunately, other YouTubes that I have seen do not cover it very well, but I'm gonna cover it today and you will never have to watch another video about this topic ever again. So hey, one thing I wanna mention before we get too far into this is that this video is not about servicing your RC valve. This video is about adjusting the RC valve and basically testing the RC valve. If you need to know about actually assembly and disassembly and service of an RC valve, I've got a great video on that right here and you can look that up. The assemblies may be slightly different. In fact, they definitely are different between some of the model years of the uh, CR125 and CR250, but they're very similar in a general sense and most of the processes are pretty similar. So if you've got a manual, you can probably figure out the subtleties. So I'm just gonna leave you to your own devices on that one, but that video is up there if you need it. And uh, so with that said, I wanna go over a few other important things about the RC valve. So the RC valve is what's called a variable port timing system and basically what that means is through throttle inputs and through electronics, you can vary the exhaust port height to affect better performance on your motorcycle. These systems were developed as far back as the 1990s and first made their way onto Grand Prix motorcycles like those ridden by Freddie Spencer um, back in the 90s on the RC250. And eventually the systems migrated their way over to dirt bikes and were made somewhat famous by Ricky Carmichael on the factory Honda team as he rode his CR250 to so many championships. Because of the RC valve, a lot of people thought it was the Ricky Carmichael valve, but of course we know it's the radio control valve or it's the revolutionary, no, remote control. <laughs> it's the revolution control valve. So hey, anyway, so there were three systems that are out there that I have seen as ways that people purport to adjust this system and really only one of them works well in my opinion. One thing I wanted to assure you is that by the time we're done with this video you will completely understand this system and you'll be able to adjust it once and for all with confidence and know that you're doing it right. So I think that's all I really need to tell you in the backstory. so if you're ready to get working I am too so let's grab some tools, strip the seat off and gas tank off and get to work. Start by removing the seat. Next, you remove the fuel tank. Pull back this tab, let the wire out. Four screws and remove the RC valve cover. So with the RC valve cover off, we can now remove the cables and test the actuation of the flapper valve.
With this test, you basically want to make sure that you have smooth actuation of the pulley. If you don't, the likely cause is carbon buildup, and that would definitely be a reason why this wouldn't rotate, and could also be a cause of incomplete valve actuation when this thing is rotating under high RPM loads. So this, is, this test is fine, the thing actuates nicely. With the cables disconnected at the pulley, the next thing to check is the operation of the servo. So to do that, you uh, remove the cables, they're loose now, take them out of the servo body so that they're loose, and rotate the servo by hand. This should rotate fairly easily, just with very little resistance. This servo body and servo motor should not be pulled down by the cables at all once the cables are installed and tightened to specification. Next, release this strap holding the wires. To separate the plug from this base, you have to slide a small screwdriver, as you see here, and then press against the plug portion to relieve the plug out of its base. The way you get the six pin off of its mount is to slide a small screwdriver between the main body of the six pin and this mount, this aluminum mount that's connected to the frame. So with the six pin connector removed, I wanted to show you the wires that service the six pin. There's a yellow red, white black, white green blue green and light green so now that we've gone over the six pin connector and the various wires that service that I want to explain the function of those wires and what they're actually doing. So two of the wires, the white black and the white green, are the power wires that go into this servo. So you'll see that when we do the test, why that's significant. Now the servo is managed or it's got basically a gateway to allow for voltage to pass through it and that device kind of works like a throttle, it's called a potentiometer. And a potentiometer is basically a voltage separator and it separates voltage from the motor and allows for voltage to pass through in a progressive fashion. So through the ECM and the magic of the electronic system, at 3000 RPMs, a certain amount of voltage, the beginning voltage, basically starts to pass through the potentiometer. That voltage causes this motor to rotate in this counterclockwise direction, raising the flat valve inside the cylinder port. So once that the throttle is released, there's no more voltage. And the spring here, this return spring, basically brings this pulley back to its relaxed state against the pin. I wanted to explain a little bit about that servo. So now let's go on to the test that we're gonna do to show you how the servo is working or not working. And uh, so I guess it's time to just move on to that. The first test we're gonna run is the servo motor test. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove these cables that actuate the pulley. And the way that you do that is the frontmost, you just move it out of its groove and remove the pin. That leaves room for the second one to pull all the way through, and that's how you remove those. Attach a 12 volt lead to two different pins on the six pin connector, which actually only has five pins, but connecting the positive lead to the white black wire, this one, and then attaching the negative lead to the white green wire, which is in the lower right corner. All right, so those are attached. So now we energize the system with 12 volts of power. I'm using a uh, jumper battery. That should rotate this servo motor. And it does. So the next test is to reverse these leads. It should result in the servo motor rotating the opposite direction. So in this, in this test, I have the positive lead on the green white wire and the negative lead on the black white wire. So now we're gonna energize the system with 12 volts and it should counter rotate the servo. And it does. So that worked. So the servo motor is operational. So that's test number one. The next test is for the re potentiometer resistance. And in order to do that test, we connect a lead to the yellow red wire, which is in the upper left corner of the six pin connector. And the other connector for this test goes on the blue-green connection, which is the upper right. It's hard to get those little alligator clips in there. Okay. 
So you see the reading here of 4.24 ohms in this case, and the range for this one is 3.5 to 6.5 kilo ohms. So this test passes, so we're on to the third test. So for the final test, we're going to be testing resistance with a battery connection. In this case, the battery connections are going to be the positive is on the white black, the negative is on the white green. The test connections for the ohm meter with this yellow lead is going to the light green lead. And finally, I can't fit an alligator clip into this uh, six pin, so I'm gonna just use this probe to, from the ohm meter to uh, touch the final lead to uh, complete all the circuits for this test. So uh, again, we use a 12 volt power, and let's see what happens. So the value that this test should yield is between zero up to 3.5 to 6.5 kilo ohms. So you can see the number changing dynamically. It never gets all the way to zero, but it never goes over 6.5 kilo ohms. So uh, this is definitely in the range for the specification detailed. So this test passes also. So with that job done, you can return the cables back. All right, so we've tested all the connections basically and the servo is operating correctly. Now we're gonna move on to the three techniques that are out there for adjusting the RC valve. The first technique that we're gonna employ is the Honda service manual technique, the factory Honda technique. And so uh, that's our first technique. And so if uh, you guys are ready, I'm ready to tear into that. So the, the wires are reinstalled on the servos and inserted into the servo body. So now we can adjust the flat valve. Starting with the rear cables. So first you install the rearmost RC cable into the servo body at the top near the servo. Next you make sure the outer lock nut is seated against the adjuster. Then install the cable into the pulley. Rotate the flat valve to its fully open position. Then turn the adjuster until the inner lock nut abuts against the cylinder. And that's that. Tighten the 10 millimeter nut against the case. That's the rear. Next to go to the front, rotate the pulley to the stop pin. Install the control cable into the pulley. Next, put the spring seat into the spring perch. Both of the adjuster nuts are loose, allowing free movement of that. So pull up the front RC control cable while swinging this back and forth and turning the adjuster in clockwise, although it doesn't say clockwise. Pulling up on the cable until the inner lock nut seats against the case. Okay. Then seat the outer lock nut and tighten. So this is the Honda technique. And I wanna show you a couple things about this before I go into even more detail about why I don't like it. But let's just rotate up to the servo. Before I explain in more detail, look at the uh, amount of slack there using that system. There is no way that's correct. No way that that is correct. It's way too much slack in the line. So imagine that when the servo rotates, it has to spend a good eighth of its turn just taking up the slack on that before anything even moves. So there's no way that system works. It's a tremendous amount of slack. Okay, so that's the Honda technique. Now I wanna to explain to you a few things that I really don't like about this technique. The first and the most important reason, in my opinion, is that the directions really suck. So let me explain why. So the first instruction asks you to adjust this adjuster until this nut is seating against the cylinder. That's fine, but just imagine, you could keep pulling on that thing as long as you wanted, just depending how strong you are, basically. You could keep pulling on that thing for a while and put a lot of tension there, frankly. So that could be a significant difference, you know, how much you're actually pulling up on this thing before you decide that you're gonna, you know, have that engaged. Or if you screw that thing all the way down, you know, how much, how much is it supposed to pull? This stops, then this touches, that's the limit. That's not really, to me, a very definitive way to describe it. There's a couple issues also on the front cable adjuster that I don't like. So one of them tells you to move this adjuster fore and aft or back and forth while you are pulling up on the cable. Why? 
I mean, should I keep just wiggling that until I get tired or am I supposed to pull up on this until what happens, you know? To me, they don't explain. Now, because I've done it, I kind of have an idea what the implication is as to why that they suggest to do it that way. But basically, it's you move it fore and aft until you can no longer easily move it fore and aft. But that's not really a very definitive way to describe the cable tension when it's done. Another thing I don't like is that they tell you to turn the adjuster until this nut basically uh, engages the case. So which way? It doesn't tell you. Turn it this way, turn it that way. It doesn't tell you anything. So to me, you know, the Honda service manual should be the definitive source for information. And it should say, turn the adjuster clockwise until this thing seats. But again, it doesn't really give you any idea like how much tension is really supposed to be in these wires. And most importantly, it really doesn't address what the main purpose of this whole exercise is, which is to have the valve completely closed at under 3000 RPMs and completely open or open until the uh, port timing is maximized on the uh, rotation of the servo. So it doesn't really detail that very well. So the directions are really poor. Another really significant weakness in this system that I will get to later is going to kind of blow your mind, but I'll get to that in a minute after I've done the next technique. And the next technique is to me the worst of the most popular techniques out there, which I call the 12 millimeter technique. And basically it, it tells you that you're supposed to have a predefined gap between the pulley and the bottom of this adjuster. But to me that is absolutely stupid and I'm going to show you why. But first let's go ahead and do the procedure. Right now we're going to try this 12 millimeter method. Seems completely stupid to me. All right, so now we've done the 12 millimeter technique, which I really don't like. And there's a lot of reasons why to me this technique is completely flawed. First of all, the tension on this cable and the amount of tension that should be in this cable to me is very misunderstood and there's a significant amount of disinformation on the internet and YouTube about how much tension is supposed to be in this cable. So I'm going to digress for just a moment and explain something to you. So the diameter of this cable is almost the same diameter as a clutch cable. Now you can imagine a clutch cable has no flexible joints in it whatsoever. It goes all the way into the engine with no flexible joints. The cable itself is probably five feet long or so. And the diameter of that cable is barely larger than the diameter of the cable that is used for the RC valve. So when people talk about stretching the cable, you've got a cable here that's like, what, six or eight inches long, mounted on a grommet mounted servo motor. So the idea that this is going to stretch, highly unlikely. However, another important thing about this particular technique that to me makes it extremely weak is that it puts a tremendous amount of tension into this wire, so much so that it buckles this cable. In fact, I've already relieved this because I think it's so damaging, rotating this servo motor in, under tension on those grommets. There's no way that this was designed to be rotated through the tension on the cable if it's a grommet mounted motor. Now, if this was like a clutch and it was hard mounted, that might make some sense, but this is flexible for a reason. And that is because the amount of tension that's necessary on this cable to make it operate correctly is much less than I think is represented by a lot of people on the internet and on YouTube. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of cable tension to make this system work correctly. And I'll tell you one other thing it does. If you read up on this particular uh, adjustment and how popular it is, which it is, you will also find that a lot of people are talking about breaking the gear teeth inside the servo motor. And I can guarantee you that the main cause of that is an unnecessary amount of load put on the motor by over tightening this cable. It's a big mistake. The system is completely flawed. There's absolutely no reason why you should be basing some arbitrary gap to, to set the tension. The only thing that you're doing when you adjust this back adjuster is the preload for this pulley in the open most position. Now there's another significant flaw in this particular technique that I'm going to explain when I finally get to the most important and the correct technique, which I'm about to go over now. So the next technique is actually my super secret technique that hardly anybody knows about, but I was able to find out from Honda Racing Corporation itself, from the God of all gods of Honda, I've got the way to do this correctly 
it's a little bit more involved, but it's the correct way to do it. And once you do it this way, you will definitely not be going back to some of these other stupid systems. So let me get into that right now. So in order to do this HRC super secret technique, you're gonna to have to remove the pipe. So in this technique, you take something like a stick that needs to be clean and put it all the way up on the port. So this stick extends all the way into the cylinder and then you wedge it up to pull the flat valve to its openmost position and no more. So this is the openmost position. This is the overly rotated position, open position. All right, so now you see how it works. The, the, the flat valve never needs to be any higher than this. All right, so we have our port lifting stick, for lack of a better word, inserted into the cylinder and into the, to the position where the flat valve enters the exhaust port. The pulley is in a slightly open state. And now we're gonna rotate the pulley using the stick as a lever. Basically the stick is right up the center of the port. And I'm gonna push it down and lock this pulley in its upward most position or most open position without over rotating. So that position is set there. Now holding the stick, pull up on this cable. So this sheath should not have slack in it. And then tighten the inner lock nut to the cylinder case, which there it is. So with that tension, want to have tension on the cable but not a crazy amount we're going to tighten this adjuster down so that is the rear cable adjuster set now we remove the stick rotate the pulley to the stop pin now this is where the manual does not describe this procedure very well so this sheath should not have slack in it you can actually tighten this thing down so much that this sheath will move up and down. So when the manual talks about moving the adjuster fore and aft and up and down, it's basically to the point where the sheath is starting to get slack basically on the line. So you want to tighten it down up until the point when this sheath is uh, sliding on the cable. So you tighten down, pulling up and down on the, on the uh, adjuster. Fore and aft, feeling the cable. There, now can you see that? It's starting to move on the sheath. So that is an over adjustment. We gotta back it up. Still too much. There we go. So now what we've done is we preloaded this spring. This spring is the return mechanism for the pulley when the throttle is released. So this spring tension is the function that returns the pulley back to rest. So this sheath is now tight. No slack in that. The lines have tension, but not a crazy amount of tension. And that is our setting right there. Now we can set the jam nut. So what you're after is to put as much preload as you can into the spring, but not creating slack in the sheath. Now we can set the jam nut, return the boot back over the front adjuster spring, and return the rear boot over the rear adjuster. For those of you who are curious, I thought we could go ahead and throw the calipers on that gap and see what kind of gap we end up with. Look at that, 10 millimeters, not 12. All right, so you can see using the HRC system, you get a result, and that's one thing that makes this system superior to any other technique. So for instance, when you're doing the Honda technique, you're overly rotating this valve when you set the tension on the rearmost cable. That's a mistake, as you can see, because look at the variation and the offset between the, uh, the position at which this thing is fully open, the flat valve is fully open, and where it should be. So there's definitely an incorrect adjustment when you do it using the factory system. That's the way that this valve should be. It doesn't need to operate past the, the position where the bottom of the flap is even with the edge of the exhaust port in its openmost state. That's all you need and no more. There's never gonna be extra power created because of the turbulence behind that exhaust port with this pulley overly rotated and the flaps overly open for lack of a better way of putting it. You'll find that this system operates much more smoothly and without flutter like you see in the other techniques for doing this. 
On the 12 millimeter technique, again, you've got an overly rotated flat valve, and that is definitely not anything that's gonna benefit your performance. And in addition to that, you're also overly stressing this cable here for no reason whatsoever, which of course, as we mentioned earlier, is a detriment to the gear drive motor inside the servo. So in this technique, we have a goal, and the goal is to have open, but no more than it needs to be, and close, fully closed at 3000 RPMs. That is what is the purpose of adjusting this RC valve. You can create a way to repeat this value over by drawing a line, let's say, using a straight edge across the butterfly valve so that you can find this indexing mark again in the future, just in case, let's say, you wanna do a top end job on your bike and you end up taking the flat valves apart or something like that, you're rebuilding them and you wanna be able to repeat the location of the openmost position of the flat valve. And I think you'll find that if you do it this way, you're gonna have much better performance on your bike. So uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed uh, that. And I got a couple other things to share with you, so hang on just one second. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you learned something today. That RC valve is very controversial, but you should feel pretty confident now that you know how to do it. So, hey, I just wanna mention that after this, we're gonna start up our CRF70 build. I was talking about that in my last video, but that's about to come online. We're gonna strip down a CRF70 and completely go through it with the help of the guys over at T-Bolt USA. But uh, that said, if you have some comments or if you have some videos you'd like me to make, you'd like to address those in the comment section below, please feel free. And uh, that's about it. So thank you very much for watching. Appreciate everybody that likes and subscribes. Appreciate all the nice comments and have fun in your garage. And the chainsaw murderers here.